Hi guys, Jason Smith here, down at Berry Golf Range in Suffolk. I'm going to do a little bit of a head to head. Um, Taylor made M2, 2017 model, against the Epic. Epic. We'll do this one first. I'll go grab Epic and I'll go hit that. And then we'll go do some GC2 numbers, do a bit of a comparison. Right, okay, just getting straight away into like this one. I've got my own Epic that I've got um, access to, and it's this one's a slightly longer shaft than the Epic that I've got. Um, it won't really make any difference. I would, people have gone to the point of years and years of actually getting longer and longer and longer shafts, and actually all it's done is make, okay, it's make the head travel faster, yes, because it's a longer shaft, although what they're just doing, they're just being a little bit more inaccurate with how they strike it. So whatever gains they're getting in clubbed speed, uh, they're losing in efficiency with not being able to hit the middle. So, um, but comparing, it's a case of 460 head, 460 head. Excuse me, you've got, okay. There is not much difference between this in technology wise, between this and the 2016 model. So they are tweaking it. The, the biggest thing that Taylor made a sound with the M2 really is the geoacoustic, tried to make it sound a little bit more like a normal driver than a dead carbon one. Um, I pers I don't mind the dead sound because Epic's fairly similar. Um, but they, there was obviously reports of the fact that some people didn't like it and they've changed it. So we'll go bash some and see if all got a ball ready. And um, we'll just see if the noise is better than last year. I like the profile on top. I do like the white to black. I do like the carbon bit on top. It looks nice. I do like the look of carbon. Um, it's kind of a bit of like a boy racery kind of club. We're seeing carbon all on your golf clubs, but I quite like it. Uh, it's different. Um, I think uh, Callaway did that on the was it the FT3 or whatever it was, where they had the old first composite head. Had that kind of look, um, but they've just done it nicely with the white. I like last year's model. I like this year's model. We're gonna basically they're two clubs. M2, forgive us, forgiveness. Callaway Epic, the normal one, is forgiveness with a little bit of jailbreak as well to try and make it go quick and far and all that lot. But it's basically the two models are alike. They're both trying to be the forgiving sector. So we will be, I'll hit this one first and then go get Epic. Oh, forgot. Pro Tracer. So don't put Pro Tracer on, then you won't see wherever they go got that right let's stick pro tracer on right let's go bash this one see if we can get two decent comparisons oh that's high that face was slightly open that'll be interesting to see on pro tracer that was high hit and slightly open at impact Considering, okay, it was a poor delivery. I'm not a robot. I don't deliver good numbers every single time. No one does. Tour professionals hit some massively wild shots. So everyone, be a little bit nicer to yourself. It is drive, remember. But that was just a poor delivery and slightly poor strike. But considering the delivery wasn't actually that bad a result. So let's hit another one. See if we can do a slightly better job at delivering this. There's my normal pull with the M2. With this face, the club, the M2 set up one degree closed. I'm normally used to a club which is set up one degree open. So my shots with M2 do have a tendency to sort of like hang on to that side of the course when I'm on the range looking at a target. Um, I won't know until I actually get onto GC2 and hit them indoors when I've got no frame of reference, as in no target, I'm just concentrating on delivering straight. Um, but it'll be interesting to see. But these do have a tendency to go a little bit left. There you go, another one left. <laughs> Don't want it's a, let's look at GC2, what did it say? Okay, again, I had this with my review of the M2 normal. So if you haven't seen that, um, channel, click on, have a look. Um, I wasn't getting the ball speeds that I was expecting to get. Now with the normal drive, with the 
modern day driver. I'm sort of 250, 255 in around that. That was a decent hit, left, but it's a decent hit, and that was 243. Let's see if we can stop this one going left. Nope, still going left. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd have to, I don't know, with M2 for me, the face is just too closed. At two degrees wouldn't seem that much difference, but it, for me, how, how I deliver, I've just, it's, it's just off putting. Even though when you look at it, you can't see that it's actually one degree closed um, because of how they've moved the white profile on top. You can't get away from that black face to look as though it's just pointing that way. I want it one more. Then I'm gonna go get Epic. And then we'll go, see if I can actually get this one pushing out a little bit. See if I can funk delivery, see if I can hit target a bit. There we go. Now, I'm having a funk delivery there. I'm having a feel as I hit it that I'm keeping the handle forward. Just try and stop that face from turning over. But if you do have a tendency to slice the ball, hence the reason why they've got the M2, they've made it slightly closed. They do make a draw bias one this year for the first time. Right, we're gonna go get Epic now. Hit that, compare it up, then get on some GC2 numbers and see how they compare. Let's go get Epic. Right, back with the Callaway Great Big Bertha Epic, the standard one. Um, we have this one now I'm gonna go against the M2. Hit the M2. Let's now hit the Great Big Bertha Epic to see how it compares. Just do a quick overview of the head. I've got a full review on my channel, so if you wanna see that one, click on my channel and have a look. It's on there. Um, jailbreak technology, new for Callaway this year. Basically, it sort of ties the crown and the sole together. Uh, makes it stronger with a thinner face, trying to make put ball speeds. Actually, in all fairness, when it comes to my test, uh, my previous one, I won't go into the whole thing because um, I'll spoil it. Uh, but it did prove to give me decent uh, ball speeds. So, anyway, we've got carbon everywhere. It does look cool. It's a lovely looking head. I must, I must admit, like the M2 carbon top. Um, if this one's all black. It does look nice. I'm a great fan of having the carbon look on there like I look like the M2. Um, got a little bit of metal at the back here, which kind of looks like it's tying everything together. Um, and the weight track, and that's a 17 gram weight. I think this is a heavy old weight. Um, so we can move it around the old track to try and um, give you a little bit more fade draw bias or in the neutral. Neck, it's a nine degree head, crank down one degree to eight degrees. And we've got the 10C CK Series 60 Flex, Torx Flex, Boron Tip. This is a low spin. It's basically the same shaft that I had in my um, previous review. And I've been told, I don't know how true it is, but then again, tour players change quite rapidly. Uh, this, apart from being uh, 70 gram, this is the same shaft as what Mr. Woods has in his driver. That's what I've been told. Anyway. Let's get to hitting them so I can compare. We'll have to go and uh, get on GC2 with Pro V1s and actually hit them in a closed data environment to see and properly compare. Um, but from the point of view of the looks, it's the same size heads, 460 head with the M2. M2 head does look bigger because it's got that white banding, that little white profile. We've got little um, speed humps on the top here to make the club head travel faster. Yeah, okay. I'm not a great fan of that. Um, I, I suppose if you really, really swung at it quick, these little aerodynamic ideas would make a difference for me. Not so sure. Um, but what I do like is the fact that it just, when I hit it last time, it sounds nice. I quite like the dead sound to it. Um, I'm gonna be hitting this one and I'll let you know how it compares to the M2 in feel and sound. There we go, a bit of Pro Tracer, just so you guys can see what happens. All right, we've got a target down there, see if we can try and hit that target. Oh, a necky one. I start off fractionally left of target and that's cut off. So that's the problem when you don't quite catch it. These things are only forgiving to a certain amount. That was slightly necky. Otherwise, not bad, just slightly necky. See if we can get a better one. 
There we go, it's a classic left pull. That would do. Yep. I like that. Sounds, well, feels, I would argue it sounds and feels slightly better than the M2. I do like the feel of this. Um, it's not I don't like the feel of the M2. I just prefer the feel of this. I do. It just, I'd say it's stable. It's a hard, it's a hard thing to describe because you have to test yourself. But I honestly, I, the, the word I could, if I had to put a word to it, it feels more stable when I hit it. Even if I don't hit it bang on, it feels more stable. Oh, that's a little bit left of my normal left pulley shot, but that might be a fraction too far left to get fairway. Good hit though. Uh, good numbers too. Uh, I've got GC2 down here measuring my range balls. <laughs> so um, these are range balls, so they're not going to go nowhere near as far as they should do if it was a proper ball. But that was um, 261. For a range ball, that's quite a long way, considering out of the M2. Okay, dare I say, okay, spoiler alert. Um, I think, I'm not sure until I get on Pro V1s and GC2 on there, but I look just by range balls alone. There does seem to be a difference already. We won't know until we get it properly on closed data, but. Ah, so not, oh, that's fade. Oh, that was looking really love to be bang on target. It's just slightly faded off to the right, but it's still a very good shot. That's in the fairway all day long. I like that one. Good strike. You can see where you hit that on the face. Middle, 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 slightly higher. I like the feel of this. I do prefer it over the M2. I'm also, I'll say that now. I prefer the feel of Epic over M2. Not to say M2 is bad by no stretch of the imagination, but this just does, it feels more stable when you hit it. Yeah, that's nice. I like that. I do like that. I. I would all day long, I'll choose this over the M2. Looks wise, I probably prefer this over the M2, but that's personal preference. Feel wise, I definitely prefer this, and ball speed, I definitely prefer this. <laughs> just, I seem just to get more out of this one. Let's hit one more before we go into do the numbers side. That's lovely. Fractionally left the target, I'm talking like six yards. 153 balls, but yeah, it's nice. Right, let's go get some Pro V1s, hit them with GC2, and close data, get some real ball data for you, and see how these compare. Right guys, let's look at some real ball data, captured on GC2 with my Gamble Pro V1, and we'll look at M2 first. Now, I hit four shots with each club, um, count them all in, good shots, bad shots, or anything else, and on average for the M2, out of the four, uh, average ball speed 157. Launching at nearly 14 degrees, which is give or take is where I want to be, that's sort of 14 and a half bracket. Uh, side angle and side RPM, that's me, so don't worry about that so much, that's uh, the individual. Spinning though at uh, 3062, so again, quite high up on the spin model. Um, I had these clubs, um, same with the Epic and also the M2, the loft is far down as low as it will go. Um, give or take, there was a very tiny amount of difference in loft, but they're within reason, they're both set up exactly the same. Um, peak height's 42 and a half, slightly too high. Descent angle, 44.6, that's getting quite steep as well. And a carry of 262 on average. Um, the dispersion, 11.1 .1 left, that's, again, that's me. Um, all in all, it feels a lovely club, the M2. And I don't have any quarrel at all with the look of it. Um, it just, for me, feels nice, sounds better. Um, it just doesn't produce the spin model that I want from the type of club that it is. Um, I'm, spin model wise, it'd be more like the M1, but the M2 has got the forgiveness. Um, so looking at it, still not bad, but slightly too high on the spin model. If we go over to the Epic, Let's have a look, the Epic versus the M2. Again, four shots. Now, I slightly struck these two, or these four, in a, well, I wasn't quite as accurate with the strike with the Epic that I was with the M2. 
Um, that is, again, that's personal performance. So I had two there which I hit quite well, um, and then two there which I hit kind of like a little bit high, a little bit toey. So you can see that's where it's really dropped the spin off. I hit the uh, the ones, the two in the middle, uh, 157, 158 ball speed. Again, pretty good ball speed. I hit them middle, middle. I like to hit them slightly middle and, and slightly high, just so I can drop the spin off a little bit. But this was middle, middle. It didn't do too bad. It was like a little bit cutty on one of them. But to be fair, or both of them actually, to be fair, but in, that's when you see it spin up at 2.7 and 2.5. Now, um, it was launching slightly high which again, that is my strike. There was two in there that I caught quite high up on the face and toey, hence the reason why you see all the spin drop off, which has affected the launch figures. 2.2 um, left, 3.2 right, little kind of cuts. Um, but 2193 on average. So 2.2 two with a spin, massive difference to the 3000 spin model that I had with the M2. Um, peak height's 40, so it's getting a little bit more usable. Um, over, anything over 40 is getting a little bit too high. 41.3, it's a shallow descent angle as well. And um, with a carry distance on the end of 272, 10 yards further than the M2. Don't worry about the lefts and rights, 2.3 left. That is just a, that's me. Um, on the whole, um, I struck the M2 better. Yes, I did. Um, just performance wise though, when I use the Epic, uh, on average, even the misses go better, if that makes sense. Looking at the two, I'm gonna go back to uh, M2. The longest I had there was 264. Now, that's not bad. Uh, it is a little bit left. It's still sort of grab on the edge of the fairway-ish. Um, but 262, 264, 261, 260, quite good, uh, decent, uh, numbers there it's just that the spin model is just too high 2850 299 320 it's just too high so it goes too high it drops too much it's not going to get too much bounce bounce roll where if you go over to the epic yeah if you're looking at i mean the one up there two of there sorry carry it 275 um one with 40.3 descent angle so it's going to bounce and roll further i'm basically just getting more distance and that was the one with the high toe strike so on all um two very good clubs um, there is a market out there for the M2. Unfortunately, I don't fit that bracket for the M2. I fit more of the bracket with the Epic because even with I miss hit the Epic, it goes further than the M2. It's just because of the spin model. So um, on the whole, I'd have the Epic. Um, that's not to say that I dislike the M2 at all. I, I like the look of the M2. I also like the, the look of the Epic. Um, on balance, I'd have the Epic. But uh, again, you must go test these guys. These are good drivers out in the market now. They've got loads of this different ideas of innovative tech, um, jailbreak when it comes to um, the Callaway. So um, yeah, hope you liked the video. If you did, click the like button below. Don't forget to comment with anything you'd like to do about the video or anything you'd like to see on the channel. And don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on my other social media. On Periscope, search Ask Golfner, and on Twitter, search at Ask Golfner. Thanks for watching.